Today's video, I'm going to be showing you the best theme team in Madden. We're going to be taking them into an online game as well and just kind of be talking about the team. Wanted to show them to you off rip. You can obviously pause the video if you want to actually take the exact players that I'm using. I'm missing a couple players right now. I got to get Calvin Johnson and um, I think Zay Flowers. But other than that, it's a really, really good team. I'm rocking the 50 out of 50 Ghosts of Mutt Future, which is really, really important because it gives you plus three speed. And then I am rocking uh, 20 out of 25. I need to get this 25 playoffs. But really the key here is Ghost of Mutt Future. Darius Hayward Bay is going to be 98 speed. Um, and then, of course, Calvin Johnson. Johnson is going to be 99 speed. This is literally in-game uh, type of metrics. And then I uh, wanted to talk just briefly about my abilities on uh, defense. I think it's most significant what I'm doing defensively. Offense kind of standard. Um, but on defense, I've got 5 AP on Bo Jackson and 5 AP on Ryan Neal. They both have deep out zone KO and mid zone KO, which we'll be talking about in the gameplay. Other than that, I got a bunch of lurk artists, and then I've got deep end zone KO on Antoine Winfield. On the offensive side of the ball, I'm rocking Andrew Luck still. I just really like Andrew Luck. Um, and then I've got Dre Archer with running back apprentice, and I've got slot apprentice on Rasheed Rice. Tony G's got tight end apprentice, and Andrew Luck has set feet lead and gift wrap. Thanks for watching this part, and let's get into the gameplay. Oh, hey, real quick, we're going to show you this real quick. Uh, as far as offensive playbook that I'm rocking, I'm rocking the Colts offense in this game. I, I kind of go back and forth between Colts and Jets. I do think those are the two best offensive playbooks. I've got ebooks on both of those on my Patreon page. You can get access to all of my ebooks for just 10 bucks. It gets you offense and defense. I've got the uh, Chiefs defense going to be running a lot of dollar. I think dollar is clear cut best defense. Probably the only, in my opinion, the only defense is dollar and maybe 6 1, um, which we have ebooks on both of those defenses on the Patreon. Strategy cards, as you can see on the page. I don't know that they necessarily do a whole lot, but uh, I'm using them because I think that they do. So let's get into the game. All right, boys, we're in game. Got my uh, stuff set up here. Got only thing I do for coaching adjustments is turn auto flip off, auto alignment on base, and we'll be rocking dollar. Now, uh, I was talking about a little bit in the beginning here. What we're doing is we are actually rocking this defense with our um, deep outside corners, and they have mid zone and deep out zone KO. I think those are two. Uh, that that stack right there is really really good, and I'm gonna explain why. So deep out zone KO. If you think about where these activates um, in terms of on your field. What we're going to notice about deep out zone KO is it pretty much activates basically outside of the hash marks. I want to say 20 yards and more. So basically any route that's over 20 yards and it's outside of the hash marks, that is where deep out zone KO is going to light up and going to activate for you. So if you touch the receiver in those uh, with the, within those uh, frames, then you're going to be able to basically knock the ball out. The problem is um, like short corners and little short C routes and wheel routes and stuff like that that a lot of people like to run. Uh, deep out zone actually doesn't knock that out. So by stacking mid zone on the ability, mid zone is basically literally anything on the field that is under 20 yards. So if it's a little underneath little middle intermediate route, it doesn't really matter. But anything on the field that's under 20 yards, mid zone is going to knock is going to activate against. So what makes it really powerful is the fact that these guys will not only will they react significantly better in zone coverage, as you just saw right there, get the pick, but they will also be able to knock out literally anything on the sideline. Um, and then they're also going to be able to knock out anything kind of deep as well. So I think that's a great AP stack. It's really I, I've really liked it a lot. Going to get screamed at first play here. We're rocking Colts on offense and Chiefs on defense. You saw how good Dollar is. Uh, dollar is just the best defense in the game. We show you in the Patreon how to run it at a really high level as well as how to adjust it, how to adapt it, how to tweak it to the best formations that you're going to be facing uh, online. And then I'm rocking Colts. Now, uh, I did want to talk about this today. So uh, what I wanted to talk about in terms of my offense is really something I've been thinking about for a while. And it's trying to be more intentional and purposeful when I play this game. As someone that creates content for a living, um, it's really, really important to me that I'm always finding something new. And while that's good for content, I always have different routes or different concepts to show people. The thing that I think actually makes worse is my gameplay. And the reason why it makes my gameplay worse is just because I don't really get a lot of good reps. And um, I don't really get like, I don't know if the word is reps, but kind of reps. Like I just don't master the reads. Um, so like uh, of the offense that I run, I don't really ever master any offense. And I think that's honestly to my uh, detriment as a Madden player. So I've been kind of on this little kick, and I talked about it in a couple of videos back, about being intentional with your play calling, understanding why you're doing what you're doing. Because I think that if you're like me, 
Sometimes you just call random stuff and you don't really know why you're calling it. And because you don't know why you're calling it, you don't really know what you're looking for. You don't know what you're anticipating. And it's one of the most underrated skills, I think, of a Madden player. And I think something that separates the best Madden players in the world from the average Joes like me is that when you're at the top of your game, you can kind of anticipate what your opponent's going to do before they're going to do it. And then you can basically kind of like pre-plan for that and adjust to it before it even happens. I think this is literally one of the things that, I mean, if you, if you look at um, any, any good Madden player, they are able to do this at a pretty high level. Now, obviously, there's a foundation um, and fundamental concept in which you are going to come into a game, and you're going to have a game plan offensively and defensively. Um, more so, I think this applies to defensively, because defensively, we have to kind of adjust to what the offense is doing. Offensively, um, you just kind of honestly need to be able to attack the whole field. If you can attack the whole field offensively, then it's going to it's going to really go well for you. It's why bunch is so good. It's why trips is so good. It's why those formations are the best formations every year because they give you the routes to be able to attack the whole entire field entirety of the field. So super super important to have the ability to be able to do that. But then if you think about it from a defensive perspective, offenses try to create space or attack space. Defenses try to basically constrain uh, constrain space or confined the offense and kind of like basically put players in position to be able to actually stop what the offense is, is trying to do. So if you take those two concepts in, in hand in hand and you start thinking about, okay, these are my plays or this is my system or whatever, what it comes down to is it comes back to not only do you have to master the reads, but you have to understand like right here. So he's sent these linebackers pretty much every single play. So for me to send five out might not be a smart idea. But now, as you see here, the slot corner goes to the left. So I might have this tight end. He goes right to the tight end. So I check down to the running back. Those are just different little pieces of the puzzle. Now, again, I, I've said this before. I think every offense in Madden, every single offense that is good, um, has to foundationally start with what is called a power play. A power play can pretty much be anything. It can be a run. It could be a pass. It could be anything you want it to be. But the thing about a power play is you commit to the power play. You commit to mastering the reads. You commit to mastering the setups. You commit to mastering the adjustments from it. That is the most important thing about a power play that I could possibly ever teach you is you have to master the power play. And in order for you to master the power play, in my opinion, you have to get a lot of reps running the power play. And it sounds simple, but most people don't do that. Most people don't get the reps they need to get. Most people don't lab the stuff they need to lab. Most people don't understand why things work and why things don't, as I'm just getting bad because I'm talking too much. And so that's kind of something that I want to change um, about my game and something I'm trying to change more intentionally. So be intentional with your play calls. Uh, the, there, there's a – with any power play in Madden, and I honestly think, too, like this is, is – it's all about knowing, like, your weaknesses, I think, too, or part of it as, I, as, I, as my great special teams career just continues to shine. So – you have to understand what your strengths and what your weaknesses are. For example, in double post, one of the, 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 the major strengths of the play is the fact that it attacks a lot of different spots on the field. But a couple weaknesses. Number one, it's a five-out play generally. Um, it's kind of hard. You can run double post with a blocked running back or a blocked tight end. But I would say the most optimal play setups of double post typically are five-out plays. So it can be susceptible to pressure, as you saw um, he was sending some pressure every now and then he got in on me even b before I could throw the ball to my players. The strengths, uh, again, like I said, attacks intermediate can really do a good job of being able to get you, uh, I mean, just beat so many coverages, just literally beat so many things. But one of the weaknesses is um, it's a five out play. Another one of the weaknesses is, especially with the base setup, like the main setup of double pose where you're just streaking or fading the slot receiver, one of the biggest weaknesses of that is that there's really nothing that attacks the left side flat and the C route is good by itself. And honestly, I actually think you can throw the C route more than oh, I shouldn't have gone for the pick. Um, you, you can actually throw the C route more than you might think, but inevitably it doesn't have a pull route for the C route typically. So the C route can be a little bit weaker. Um, the C route is going to be really good against like double Mabel coverage, but it's not going to be super effective against some of the more stock defenses, I would say. 
stock man, stock cover three, stock cover four, unless you can throw, unless you can throw the C route really, really well against an outside third. But again, if that outside third has deep out and medium, medium route or medium deep zone and, and um, deep out zone and mid zone KO, I think it's going to be hard to, to throw that consistently. So those are, that's what I'm talking about. Like you got to be aware of what stops your play. What are the adjustments that they can do as freaking Harold Carmichael is in quicksand because of the worst patch in Madden history. Oh, this fatigue stuff is terrible. So you have to understand what beats you and why, or what are you susceptible to and why? What can they do? You have to start to put yourself in the other person's shoes. Look at my team. Oh my gosh, this is going to be great. Even though we're winning by 14, we still are just exhausted. The team is just exhausted at the end of the day. There's just no rest for the weary, I guess. Um, so anyways, back to what I was saying. So you have to understand, like, what what beats you and why does it beat you? Or what stops you and why does it stop you? What what can they actually do? Once you start to, to kind of see the game from your opponent's perspective and actually understand, like, okay, they can do this, this, and this. These are the options. These are the possible things they can do um, to stop me. Now, you may every now and then come across something that you've never seen before. Most of the time, though, I would say, you know, the best players in the world do the, what the best players in the world do. And most people know what that is. Um, they just don't necessarily, I think, all the time understand why it is. And I think that's kind of more of the, of, the, of the thing you need to do. I don't know why I can't catch the interception or jump or animate, maybe because I'm tired. But with that in mind, why would I not call double post if he's not calling a defense that stops double post? Right. So if he's not sending a blitz or if he's not sending a setting up a specific coverage defense that stops double post, why would I ever call anything but double post? Right. Would it would be wasteful. Basically, it wouldn't it wouldn't have purpose. It wouldn't have attention. It would be completely wasteful unless, you know, you're actually getting bagged. So that's part A. And then part B is, OK, so he's bagging double post. What does that mean is probably going to be open? And that's where you have to kind of get into the if this, then that game of Madden and understand, okay, if they actually can adjust to this power play, it means that they're probably doing some very specific things that are going to take it away. So that's where the secondary setup of double post is really, really, really good, where you run the little basically left side flood concept with the, the, the tight end on the drag and then the running back on the wheel. Now, in this guy's example here, he's actually running – Kind of a, a blitz-heavy defense. We'll see if he stays with it. But you see here, it doesn't hard flat on the left side, so I can take the tight end drag. That that right there, just in of itself, that simple thing of they don't hard flat the left side, it opens up a lot of other stuff. Because for example, if they don't hard flat, if they start to hard flat the left side, then that means that this setup might be open a little bit more with little running back Texas right underneath. Now he's just not making any adjustments, so it's just stock cover three every play. So we'll just go ahead and take our touchdown. But again, you see what I'm kind of getting at is. You have to think through as a play caller. I think it's so underrated why you actually are going to call your counter play or why you actually are going to call your constraint theory play. And it typically has to come from they stop my power play by doing these couple of things, these possible variables that they could do. They could man up, for example, if you were going to try to stop verticals, you could man up the tight end, use the crosser and have a shaded down vert hook. That'd be a decent way to stop verticals. So if you man up the tight end and you have a shaded down vert hook, then that probably means that it's not going to be able to stop a slot corner route from like curl flat, for example. So then you could call that play. And now, now they have to kind of think about, okay, I got to stop that, but I also got to stop this. And that's where you can really start to, I think just play really, really, really good Madden because you start to actually anticipate and understand why things are the way they are. And there, there is actually a logic behind it, a reason behind it versus just coming out and um, you know, calling whatever play feels good. So just something I've been trying to do better. Now, if you um, apply that logic to defense, I've been trying to think of how to apply that logic to defense. Um, the biggest thing is understanding, in my opinion, like you have your base set up for whatever formation that you're facing. So uh, you have like, I I've talked about it a little bit before, but there's basically five ish formations in Madden. There is two by two spread, two by two compression, three by one spread, three by one compression. And then kind of a newer formation that's a little, you could either say like, I used to say just five wide, but what I'm starting to think through more, a little bit more just because of the meta, just because of what we've been seeing all season long 
is like, okay, we got to have probably a, a little bit of a plan for, you know, any kind of quads, uh, any kind of quads type set. Uh, I do think it's important to have a plan for that. So that's a, that's an example of, but again, at the end of the day, like conceptually, there's mainly like five ish, uh, core formations because you have three by one compression and that could be bunch that could be bunch tight end that could be bunch uh y flex that could be a uh, bunch nasty that could be bunch strong nasty you know what i'm saying so that's kind of the idea is you have these basic like okay these frameworks of how you see this and you've got like five ish formations and out of those five formations, um, you have maybe three to five ways that you like to defend it. We did a video last year. I'll probably bring it back this year, actually. We did a video last year talking about like the five fundamental adjustment concepts in Madden. I think we did it at the beginning of this season, actually, as well. But the five fundamental adjustment concepts in Madden, what's really important to note about that is there are like kind of general tips for really effective adjustments. For example, the double Mabel coverage, very effective adjustment, one of the most popular this year. Um, another one would be cross manning. Um, another uh, using cross man to kind of create different types of brackets and stuff like that. Um, i trying to remember what the other ones were. Roll coverage is really, really good. Um, that's in essence kind of what we're doing out of dollar where we're rolling the one of the safeties into a middle third of the other safeties rolling either into a cloud flat, a hook curl. You could even roll him into an outside third. Kind of an example of this would be cover three cloud. And then um, the other two, I'm kind of drawing a blank. Crossman, double Mabel, roll coverage. And then I can't remember what the other ones are off the top of my head. I have to, I have to go back and rewatch that those videos. But – Essentially, there are these like fundamental concepts that you can create, like base coverages that you want to run. How do you defend the spread? What are some things? What are some key tips for defending spread versus what are some key tips for defending bunch? They're different formations. So defensively, while some concepts can transfer over, you have to kind of think, okay, well, you know, they're different. For example, as you can see right here, I'm manning up the slot receiver so that I don't have to worry about a seam streak over there. Get a nice little illegal contact, just the greatest thing ever. Playing great defense, and I've somehow given him seven points. Um, you know, but anyway, things like that. So you have your base foundational coverages that you want to run. Maybe you have two or three, right? Well, in the in the idea of like power counter constraint from an offense perspective, from a defensive perspective, you have to know, okay, these are some things that I'm vulnerable to when I run this defense. Um, I think that is uh, super, super underrated because if you don't do that, then what ends up happening is you never really know why you're getting beat. You just know you're getting beat, you know, and, and then you don't know. So because you don't know why you're getting beat, you don't know what to do about getting beat and you don't know where to actually try to adjust. So those are all just kind of some things I've been thinking about in terms of just the game and trying to understand the game in a little bit deeper of a level and also trying to figure out how you can actually have a little bit more logic to your play calling and to why you do what you do so that it actually can be more replicatable. The more logical it is, the more replicatable it'll be. So uh, those are just some things. Hopefully uh, you guys you know, might have related to one of those. I'm curious what you guys think. Another thing I've been thinking about, I put a poll out on my YouTube page. If you guys haven't commented on the poll, you can uh, just go over to the YouTube page and check that out on the community tab. But I've been wondering, why is it in Madden? Like basically, for as long as I've been playing Madden, which I started like really doing YouTube in Madden 12, I did play Madden before it, but I wouldn't say I was like super serious. Probably the most serious I was before Madden 12 was probably Madden uh, Madden 11 was probably like the, the, where I really started to get like pretty into the game and learn a lot of stuff and tried to learn as much as I possibly could. But literally for as long as I've been playing Madden, uh, bunch has been probably without a doubt the best offense. So what I've started to kind of wonder, and this is what I put the poll out is like, why are bunch style offenses always the best? Pretty much always. Um, it's not necessarily like last year tight was pretty meta. Uh, tight was obviously probably the best offense, but even at that, like compression sets in general, whether it be bunch, tight, um, you know, trips tight in was really good. I think in Madden, I don't remember what it was. As far as like a top tier meta offense, I think it was Madden 21. 
uh, was back when uh, J Wall won the club championship with Tripside in. And I think spamming, that was when spamming buttons started to kind of come up, was I believe Madden 21 in the summertime running trips. And so Tripside in was kind of one of the better offenses in Madden 21. Uh, but really outside of that, outside of like a couple of isolated scenarios, for the most part, look, look at that. Look at that catch. Um, for the most part, bunch has been, you know, a bunch style of offense has pretty much been the best offense, like literally ever, every single year. So, you know, you're kind of left to think, okay, we'll wonder why that is. And a couple different observations. I think number one, bunch does provide really good routes. Like the double post route is a route that you don't really see out of a lot of playbooks. It has double that kind of route. It has these uh, C routes on the solo side. The formation itself, I remember, I think I heard W do a video on this. I can't remember when he did this. This guy literally is just going to run cover zero. So we're going to go to this setup. Um, but I can't remember when W did this video breakdown on this. But essentially what he said I thought was really interesting was, but Bunch is always going to be good as a formation because it's spread on one side, compression on the other. So you're getting, you're getting a combination of a compression set on one side and a spread set on the other side, which allows you the most amount of, I don't know that he said this, but I kind of concluded this. And that by very nature allows you the most amount of ways to attack defenses because you're attacking them from two different fundamental uh, formation concepts. So kind of interesting to think about. I don't know. What do you guys think? Why has bunch always been really a good offense? My man TNT just, I mean, you got to say, if you can't say anything about my man TNT, he's got some fight. I just think the dollar defense also, um, I've been thinking about this as well, like what makes dollar so good? And obviously every single defense, you have to have the threat of pressure. So the fact that we're able to create um, pretty effective blitzes, uh, for lack of better uh, word, but just like effective blitzes at the end of the day, we're able to create effective pressures. I don't know how that hook curl actually played that. I haven't seen it play that yet uh, on that crosser. We're able to create effective blitzing concepts. You have all kinds of different blitzing concepts in dollar. I talked about this last year. There's pretty much, I think there's like five fundamental blitzing concepts as well in Madden. Uh, basically, you have slot corner pressure, which would be like DB Fire 2. Um, you have, what's the other one? You have crossfire pressure, uh, which hasn't been super popular over the last couple of years, but it was really good in Madden 18, Madden 7, or Madden 18 and Madden 19, which was the nickel three, three, five odd crossfire, but there is a way to do that same basic thing um, conceptually out of dollar and out of one, four, six style formations as well. So, cause they literally had to play crossfire. That's pretty much all you need to do it. And then uh, this year, or there was loop blitzing, which was really good at the beginning of the year. And, or I'm sorry, not loop blitzing. I, it was called loop blitzing, but really the concept was just stacking content contain stacking where you were blitzing your slot corners, bringing them off the edge and stacking them on the hips of the defensive ends and containing. Then there was um, just standard edge pressure. That's what I would call 4-3, even 6-1, where you just basically are overloading the center. This was really good in Madden 17. It was the nickel blitz 2. Um, it was also really good in Madden 20 as well. And, um, the contain stacking really good has been really good last for really almost – every year um it was really good in madden 21 it was really good in madden 22 it was really good in madden 23 really good in madden 24 so um there was another time kind of what i would call more of an actual loop blitz that was really good in madden 22 and um it was the drawing a blank on the the, the name of it it was the dollar uh, or the dime 236 will formation and the dime 236 will formation had a play called i want to say edge blitz 2 that concept is in dollar as well so you have and, and that's what i would say is more so what i would call like a traditional loop blitz because they were actually looping around um the tackle on a contain which was really really good so anyways you have loop blitzing crossfire blitzing contain stacking standardized edge pressure slot corner pressure um and then really what i would i would say the dollar a gap blitz this year, it's a little bit more resemblant of kind of almost like a crossfire, honestly, the way it practically plays, but um, it's not necessarily, it's really not specifically a crossfire. Um, in fact, this blitz, this type of a blitz hasn't been really good in Madden since I believe Madden 25, uh, which was like, I think actually like technically Madden 14, 
Madden 25 Next Gen, when they went to PlayStation 4, um, the mid-zone blitz, I remember that was really good. You could basically, I think it was like three people over the A-gap. It was like out of nickel 245, and it was the same kind of thing where the middle linebacker, the blitz angles were just really good. And I believe it would cause disengages and A-gaps, kind of like what we're seeing um, develop here later in the Madden season this year. So those are kind of some of the main concepts for blitzing. But what I think is really interesting about dollar and why dollar is always such a good formation is it pretty much has the majority of ways to blitz. It has slot corner pressure. It has loop pressure. It has crossfire pressure, has the ability to stack, contain stack. Um, in this example, it has what we would, what I would categorize as, like I said, you know, like a, like a little a gap type of loop, almost type pressure. So it just has everything from a formation that you can ask for. And I think that's what makes it so good. Kind of like Bunch. Bunch just has the best routes at the end of the day. Um, for the most part, without fail, Bunch has really, really good routes. One of the things that's really important to say about tight is tight was really good, but tight wasn't like top tier meta until the route chemistries came in. So if you remember the first tournament, uh, Henry won the first tournament. Hey, I think he actually won the ultimate kickoff the last two straight years. But in Madden 22, the ultimate kickoff tournament, he was running Washington Bunch. He would audible to tight situationally, but it was primarily working the C route out of Bunch last year at the beginning of the year. Now, and then, and then of course, fast forward, and then tight slots was so good at the towards the end of last year. Tight slots was really good. If you think about it, again, we got a bunch of route chemistries. We were able to put slot apprentice posts out there. We were able to get the slant post going. We were able to put corner routes to both sides. Ultimately, tight uh, offset tight end, I think, was the most powerful formation. And the fact that you had the double corner concept, you had the, and then you had, I think, arguably, and that Saints end post was actually very similar to the bunch offset double post post route. So just kind of fascinating to me in terms of just how the formations all, you know, like, you know, how do, how do they, how do we always arrive at these kind of similar uh, formations, these similar passing concepts? I think there's really about five ish um, main stream passing concepts. And that has been, Oh, he's out of there. And that has been the truth for as long as I've been playing Madden. Literally there's been, I've actually gone back and done some a significant amount of research but if you actually look at the concepts that people have been running in the MCS since it started, and even before that in most tournaments, but especially in the MCS era, you basically arrive at like five-ish passing concepts. You have a slant post concept or, or drag post. I call it a shallow cross concept because it's conceptually kind of the same thing. So you basically have a slant post concept. You have a street corner flat concept, a street crosser dig concept, which would be Y cross street crosser or street corner flat to me is sale street crosser dig is Y cross. Um, and then you have kind of like a, what I call like a triangle concept or a stick concept where you typically have like a, a hitch, a post and a flat type of thing. Um, in recent years, people have kind of gone away from hitches in general because they don't beat man coverage. And in, you know, there's a lot more, a lot more what we get into today's Madden's, is these like hybrid defenses where it's man and zone or, uh, you know, we cross man certain players, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that's kind of the, 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 the defense that we see today, which is honestly um, the thing about it is the gameplay, not, not like the Madden game, like the, the console, but the players continue to get better. What most people don't understand about Madden, um, especially I think is the caliber of players has really always continued to go up. Pretty much every single year, I think players in general are getting better. They're learning more about the game. They're figuring things out that they never knew before. Uh, I, that's just kind of my two cents on that because I've kind of seen that. I feel like I'm a thousand times better than I was um, when I first started doing content back in, I think it was, like I said, I think it was Madden 12 was my first year. Let's see if I can fit that in with set feet lead. Um, yeah, so, you know, so so anyway, the caliber of player consistently goes up. And so and the game or the uh I was trying to think of the wording. Uh the schemes inherently also become in uh increasingly more complex every year. Schemes, especially defensively, um they become increasingly more complex every single year. The de the type of defense that we see played 
on the main stage in most comp tournaments at this point, it's like really, really good defense. Like people, even though they don't actually get a stop, you would be amazed if you actually watch the MCS film and really dive into what they're doing and why they're doing it. You would probably be shocked at how good they actually are both offensively and defensively, but mainly defensively because it kind of gets overshadowed because we're playing such an offensive heavy game that most people really, I don't know how I played that on the pit. I should have just ran with the quarterback. Um, most, most people, they just don't even realize all of the things that they're doing on defense pre-snap to try to get a stop. But it's just, again, it's just we're playing a very, very much so offensive heavy uh, game. So because of that, then it kind of gets overshadowed. I mean, you just, you just kind of miss it. Like, um, you, just, you just miss it. I mean, even the even the best offensive players in the world, when you hear them talk about the game, they are so much more uh, defensive-minded than you might think, or they're smarter on defense than you might think, even though when you watch them play in the MCS, they really don't get stops. Um, and that just kind of speaks to how, to a degree, how great they actually are on the other side of the ball as well. So those are just all kind of like just different types of reflections about the meta over the years. I just think it's kind of interesting. Um, like I said, why bunch style formations like this year, if you think about the best offenses in the game this year, bunch offset and bunch strong offset and bunch strong nasty. Those are the clear cut. Can't argue with it. Best formations in the game. hundred percent. You can literally take that to the bank. That that chat can cash it. Um, the only offense that is even close is the bubblegum offense out of RPOs. And the cool part about the Colts playbook is you actually have some of the best RPOs in the game. You have trips tied in. You have um, bunch nasty has a good RPO in it. So kind of fascinating to me because you have, um, like I said, you just have these kind of formations that always seem to. Uh, find their way to the top might not start that way and it might be differently too that's another thing um it might be differently like when is the last time you've seen bunch ran with a tight end apprentice haven't seen that probably in a while but most comp players this year have a tight end apprentice when they run bunch um you know when when's the last time we've seen um uh, like a running back apprentice be so important i don't think since madden 21 you know so just different things like that that uh, kind of contribute to the meta uh, being what it is. Kind of interesting. So when you're playing somebody like this, kind of running just the most random stuff I've ever seen, I, this guy's got heart. He must know I'm recording because he's got heart. Out here just balling 57 to 14, you know, no big deal. The fatigue glitch has to get patched. I don't know how we are. I think that didn't that happen like one week ago? Like we're a week in to this stupid fatigue glitch. I mean, it's literally the worst patch I've ever, probably the worst patch in Madden history because it literally didn't do anything except break the game. It literally didn't do anything for the game, negative or like it didn't do any, it wasn't like, it wasn't, <laughs> defense was already in a bad spot and then they did this fatigue glitch and now it's in a real bad spot because like I remember, I played somebody today and my, I think I, I, think I did this in this game, but, my user was literally in quicksand, like just straight up quicksand. Also, notice just how fast those guys are reacting on those outside corners. It's because they have, in my opinion, it's because of mid zone KO. Mid zone KO is, is really, really good. Let me see if I can throw this. Oh, that's crazy. You can actually throw everything with set feet lead. He had a third over there, but he was backed off. This guy just backed off cover three, man. I don't know if that's going to get the job done. Here we go. Now we're pressing up. Let's see. This man. I'm going to throw it. Oh, I'm going to throw a pick. <laughs> oh, even when I throw a pick, they just swat the ball. Man, that C route kind of drives me insane. It's such a weird route. It just doesn't – I don't love this C route from double post. I wish I did. I just feel like I can't ever get it to be – and I just might not know how to use it right. I just feel like I can't ever get it to be super consistent. All right, let's see. Is it going to go man blitz here? If he goes man blitz, the running back will be open or the tight end will be open. Tight end's open. Boom. So you see kind of what I'm saying? Like you have a pre-snap. Okay, I'm kind of anticipating he's going to do this. So if he does this, then this is going to happen. I think that's like such a underrated thing to do. And I know it sounds super simple, but 
to me, it's, it's, it's never really come easy for me to do that. And I don't know if it's cause I just don't think about it when I'm playing or I don't know. So I think it's possible in Madden definitely to overthink things and underthink things as well. And I feel like I've done both. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know how that just happened to me. Oh, uh, we got to look at the replay right there. That was a crazy animation. Let's take a look at that. All right. So let's see. Brother clicked on to the DT and just got a D line picks. There it is. See what I'm saying about double post? <laughs> the one weakness I think of double post, if you get screamed at, I mean, you can you can definitely make reads. I mean, I I put up 57 points, but I don't know, man. The double post against cover zero. I mean, I could have probably thrown the tight end. But pretty pretty interesting. Should have just gone to wide trail. Wide trail kills cover zero. Wide trail is the best blitz beater. Best man blitz beater in the game. All you have to do is either, A, put your running back on a block and release route, uh, put your running back on a wheel, put your running back on anything, and it'll work. We got to redeem ourselves, man. My man TNT is probably going to fight all the way. You know, he's got to put up some fight. He stood up for himself with that pick six. All right. A little double post. I'm surprised he's able to blitz if his team is tired. Go to wide trail. A little quick snap. See if it works. I have it. I just can't. Ugh, that's frustrating. This guy's literally just sending six, calling it good. I don't know why I'm not able to block this with this. Let's throw it. Let me throw my wide open player. Thank you. And that is why man blitz is terrible this year. <laughs> You could throw a drag and you just out of there. I mean, Jordan Addison, 97 speed. Jordan Addison's actually kind of terrible, to be honest. I need to get I need to get Calvin. I just I just can't justify the coins, man. This this Ghost of Future team is so expensive. I'm actually thinking of selling all my playoff cards. I guess the only card I would probably sell would be Ryan Neal. That's of any real value. The rest of them are all like you know, 50K, if that. But the problem is, this ghost, the ghost of much Mutt Future, the 50 out of 50 Mutt Future is the best. I, it's the best team. And it's definitely, I think it's going to be the best team for a while. That's why I'm actually willing to go build it is because I hate doing Mutt theme teams and stuff. But, I mean, you can't argue with 98 speed or whatever. Calvin will be 99 speed on the team. Also, here's a little tip I saw. I saw. Actually, I'll, I'll hold on to that. Uh, shade down will make that hook curl play seam streaks. And it, I forgot. I didn't get the shade down off. But when you shade down that hook curl against like a formation like he's running, then if you re-curl flat your – I'll show you what I'm talking about. So like here, so I'm going to shade down the yellow, and then I'm going to re-curl flat these guys. What that does is it'll make your curl flats play a little bit more aggressive than they normally are, but it will also uh, allow you to press slot receivers. So, like, if I was playing spread, I always take my, my defense off a of baseline when I play spread formations, and then I just basically um, – like, like he's in doubles here. See, I'm on default. So watch this. Watch the slot receiver you'll see here if he runs, like, a vertical route. So you see here, I put the curl flats back out there. I shade it underneath first. Well, see how he jams him, and that takes away the seam streak. So with the combination of the curl flat and the hook curl um, will do a really good job of taking away a seam streak. So now all you have to worry about is the right side, which is where the tight end is. And then obviously, as you see, we have the really nice blitz behind it. So this makes it really easy to stop spread sets. Anytime there's a defensive, like a, a, a defense that becomes like super meta, the main reason why it's so um, meta and what it does fundamentally is it it cuts off like a, the majority of the way. Can I get a KO right there, please? That's deep end zone. Um, there you see there again, like mid zone would have knocked that out because I don't have mid zone. He didn't knock it out. And I didn't get my curl flat adjustment off there on the right. It would have pressed it as you see right there. Um, 
Okay, so what I was saying about what was I talking about? Totally lost my train of thought as I was trying to make my adjustments. That's the one thing that's low key super hard about playing gameplays or doing gameplay videos is sometimes you forget what you're saying because you're you're so into the game. But anyway, um, oh yeah, yeah, defensive meta. So it cuts off the majority of what people want, ma ma the majority of what we call random uh, formations. Like formations like this, you just – this formation, I just – I mean, I'm sure there's a way to run it, but it's just not very good against this defense. Like this defense right here, that's all you basically have to do. You shade underneath, and then you repurple that guy, and as long as he's pressing that slot receiver, they'll never be able to throw a seam streak to the left side. Obviously, if they have RPOs or something, yes, it becomes a little bit more difficult, okay? Um, and then if you want to make the blitz a little better, you can back that guy off. I'm going to sit here in case he throws that again. Oh, no. And there we go. But I got 10 sacks. Dude, Gronk just out here setting records. Dude, Gronk, Gronk, Gronk is probably the best A-gapper. I hate that he's a million coins, but he's probably the best A-gapper. I don't think this guy is going to adjust to this play. Yep, no safety help. He keeps thinking there's pro – he probably keeps thinking that that guy's going to go to save, help him, but he's not. And there it is. Boom. My man TNT just showing some massive fight. We're dropping 70 out here. I don't, I don't think I've dropped. Most people quit. I'm shocked he's still in this game. And the fact that he has 21 points is honestly kind of an indictment on me. Not just, we just got to be better, man. We just got to play better defense. You know, we can't make these we can't make these bad mistakes, bad turnovers. We're kind of like the the real NFL Cowboys. You know, we we just shoot ourselves in the foot. The fact that the Cowboys lost to the Packers. Is is like terrible, like terrible. Um, I mean, it's terrible for everybody. People are gonna lose jobs, and they honestly probably should. I mean, the Cowboys. This was like the year, man. This was definitely the year they had home field. There was not like the Niners were good, but they weren't like like the Niners were good, but they were there's they have weaknesses. I actually think. The Packers have a legitimate shot at beating the Niners. I really do. And I don't really like the Niners. I like their coach, but I don't really like them as a as a team, you know. Look at that hook curl. Can't catch the pick, but he's there. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of people playing with this Michael Vick today, too. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just Tuesday Madden. Tuesday Madden, you know, Gronk. <laughs> Got 11 sacks. He just won't block the blitz. He won't do anything. This guy just doesn't understand. He just, at the end of the day, he's, a, he's an example of what we're talking about. We're just calling random play. He's just calling the most random plays trying to beat this. And that's where, like, defense is a little bit different than offense. Like, offense every now and then. Like, like I do think there's definitely value, especially on offense, and just, like, kind of tweak. Like, every now and then, like, attacking a different part of the field or, like, kind of subtly tweaking your play call. Look at that. Look at that fatigue. That's my left defensive end. He's on 1%. I think that's Terrell Suggs, by the way. Um, but anyway, um, I do think there's like an actual logic. I don't know why I keep running back. I keep thinking he's going to throw that slant, but he never does. Uh, maybe it's because I'm running back. There's a logic to like just doing kind of random stuff just to kind of tweak it. There it is, deep end zone KO, doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Like, to just kind of every now and then tweak your play call, it kind of depends on your opponent. If you're playing somebody good, I think you do need to do that. And the reason why you need to do that is because you need to um, force them to have to defend the whole field. So if you're calling an offensive play that is only defending, like, a certain section of the field, then you're really – you need to be attacking other places as well. Um, otherwise, if, if you don't do that, then they can kind of sit on whatever it is that you're doing. So you have to kind of think that out as well. So I do think there's but but defense if you if you have a defense and they're not able to beat it you should never get out of that defense literally never <laughs> um you need to be running that defense over and over again and the reason why is because it's so hard to get a stop in this Madden and if you can get a stop you 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 want to force them to have to show you that they can beat it. Now, obviously, the best players in the world, of course, you're going to have to mix things up. You're going to have to – I feel like when you're playing, like, the really good players, um, even good players, like, compared to you, you have to use anticipation so much more than you think you do. Um, you have to really try to, like, okay, he's probably going to call this or based off the adjustments or based off where he's at, 
on the field. He's probably going to call this play. So I need to set up, I need to put a cloud flat instead of a hard flat or, or whatever. Those are kind of some of those things that like over time you have to kind of just, I don't know, for lack of a better word, figure out. It's not, I wouldn't say figure out though, because you have to kind of lab. You have to kind of lab. You have to kind of know like this beats that right back to me. So, and you have to understand like with any defense, like again, kind of back to what I was saying in the beginning, but like, what can they actually do? Like, where can they hit you at? Like he's in this formation double. So I know what do I got to watch out for here? I got to watch out for a tight end corner out. I got to watch out for uh, a slant from the slot receiver, you know, some kind of post from the right receiver. Those are some of the things that could probably give this defense a little trouble. Outside of that, like the left side is pretty much dead because of that breath, because of the press, because of the press, I can get on that curl flat. Um, it's really hard to hit me to the left, especially in the seam. And then I gotta, I gotta, tr- I'm paying for the ability, so I gotta trust the KO. You know what I mean, dude? My team is so gas. Look at these players. I'm gonna, I'm definitely not, I'm not taking Gronk out of the A gap though. He's got to be the blitzer. We'll put uh, Roquan in. He'll be in. He'll be in for one play. Actually, did not get anything set. I'm still gonna get a bag. See, that's the mid zone KO. Had that not been mid zone KO, he wouldn't have activated. That's why I just think those are the two best abilities, and they just play good. They really do. They play. They play everything for me anyway. If someone was running man against double post, I don't know how I'd beat it. I'd probably do this setup, but I don't know what I would do with R one because a streak's really not. I mean, you can. It can be man. We'll cover two. All right, TNT. We got a minute left. I might. I. I kind of want to try to score a hundred points. I don't know if I can. Can I drop a hundred? I literally just booted up. I'm in Legend Division. <laughs> I'm in Legend Division. I've been in Legend Division. The. We know the head-to-head matchmaking is subpar this year, to say the least, but dropped 85. I don't think I've ever dropped this many points in a game of Madden like, against like just a random well, – I guess I have, but not like this. This is – and I'm, I've actually not played the best. Like my offense has kind of been – my reads have kind of been slow. I mean, he's just literally running over Storm Bray. I mean, he's every now and then he'll change his coverage, but it's – He's not using or anything. He's not really adjusting anything. I'm trying to decide if Colts is better than Jets, and I just can't. I just don't know. I just don't know. If you look at the belt winners, Abram runs Jets, pretty sure. John Beast runs Colts. Henry runs Colts. Uh, who won the last one? Mr. Football. He runs Colts. I'm trying to remember who else won a belt this year. Kobo runs trips, so he's kind of an outlier. He's running the ball. Man, you've been fighting all this time. Also, a little quick tip for those of you that are watching, if you're still watching the video because this is an absolute blowout. I actually think this makes the blitz better, and it's a simple little tip. Uh, Trey open. Let me try man line against it. Um, Simple little tip to make this blitz better. With your user... Stand right here, hold left trigger. I actually, I I thought for a while this year, maybe the more so in the beginning of the year, I don't know. I think it mainly had to do with edge pressure in the 6-1 blitz. But basically, um, this, this makes this, uh, so I'm standing right here. I'm going to hold left trigger, and I'm actually going to kind of run right here. I think that makes it super hard for that blitz to consistently get picked up. Once again, if you take a look at that seam streak, that's super popular to be thrown. Mid zone KO does what we needed to do. It's, I think it's the best, the best cocktail ability wise. So this is one of my favorite defenses for trips. Um, I didn't get it off my curl, curl flat. Look at mid zone. Look at mid zone out there. See, he's trying to throw the streak. I don't know. Vic might not have the ability to throw it. Um, but I'll show I'll show you this really good adjustment for trips. All right, so if you look here, this is pretty good because the hook curl will come down, and he'll kind of defend that, as you see right there. 
That's not bad. I don't think we're going to get to 100, boys. I'd have to onside. Let's see if I give up a touchdown. We're going to get to 90. We'll probably get to 90. What's... I don't know. This is definitely a touchdown. Let's see here. We'll do a little, little bit of uh, motion out. Gotta throw it. Gotta throw it. Dang it. <laughs> Man. Run verticals. Vert I should have ran verticals, honestly. Let's see if he runs me in here. Yeah, he does. I didn't want him to run man. I thought he was going. I guess I should have looked at the pre snap tells. Uh, I don't think we're going to make it, boys. Got to 90. This is 92. Got to get the onside. Got to get the onside, boys. My man TNT just putting up some fight. 21 tonight. 92 to 21. That basically was the score of the Cowboys game yesterday. <laughs> just uh, it was like just a terrible loss. All right, let's see. I don't know the onside kick method. So we're just we're just gonna go with whatever. Strong onside, I don't know. Speed. I just can't go full power. We're just gonna lay the wood. We're just gonna lay the wood, boys. Perfectly timed. Fumble. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, we got to lock in. He's just going to use the post, and then we're just. All right. All right, all right, all right. Please run main coverage. Please run main coverage. <laughs> please, 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 please. No, we ran cover three. Uh, I don't want to catch it. I don't want to catch it. Oh, I got one time out. That's actually a terrible play call by me. I should. I sh uh, I don't know why I called that. I really want to. I really want to score. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. If he blitzes us, we lost. Oh, I got it. Oh, the stupid bumping in this game. <sighs> we'll have to score hundred next time, boys. Thanks for watching the video. If you stay to the end of this video. Dude, appreciate it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the gameplay video. If you want to get my ebooks, they are in the Patreon. Links in the description.